Arbitrum. Arbitrum, the biggest L2 for Ethereum, is making a lot of moves. Big, big deal that they airdropped a whole bunch of tokens, you know, like a month ago, right? And since then, it's been falling, found the floor, now seems to be going up. There's a couple things going on. Number one is, is Arbitrum truly decentralized? Because it seems like the foundation moved 700 million away, and then people didn't like it, and now they have a proposal to move it back. So this is testing whether or not Arbitrum is truly decentralized and the governance works. And it does seem like it is. But also what people are paying attention to is there are a lot of traders right now betting big on Arbitrum. This is interesting. A trader that made $3 million on Polygon since July has now gone long on Arbitrum. So what does he think? Well, if you look at this, they actually broke this down. Uh, this guy made a total of $7.3 million in profit with a win rate of 65%. That's pretty good. His One of his largest holdings right now is Arbitrum. He also picked up a ton of magic and also Singularity. I don't know. Does that mean Arbitrum is going to go much higher? Injective also has been absolutely killing it. Today, they pulled down a little bit, but look at the three-month chart. Three months ago to $8 now. They're one of the greatest performers of this year so far. And still, relatively small market cap of 600 million. What is happening with Injective? They're they're basically their own L1, but they're the, I would say the most promising L1 within Cosmos ecosystem. So I, I believe that Injective and there's a few others out there in Cosmos that's really leading the way, but there's more that's coming out. They're just really built for all things but specifically financial stuff. And Mark Cuban is also invested into them, and so is Pantera, and so is Binance. Recently, what's been happening? A few things. They're integrating Pyth Network. Pyth Network, Pyth Network, I don't know how you say that, but they are a big oracle. They're a giant oracle that not only integrates with many chains, but also with many financial institutions out there. And when I say many, who are they, right? Like big guys like Jane Street and CBOE, also with the big exchanges, right? So they're kind of oracle for a lot of financial, uh, legacy financial systems, but you can't ignore them, and crypto systems. So they do seem like they're like a big chain link kind of competitor, but they already have partnerships with some of these other big boys uh, who utilize them for the same reason, right? So they did integrate with them recently. Also, their TVL is rapidly increasing to 500 million already, which is actually a whole lot if you think about it. But also for Solana fans, they're launching their test net so that Solana dApps can come on board into Cosmos. This is the first of its kind. We hear about all these chains creating EVM compatibility very little creative for Solana because Solana doesn't have a problem with scaling. But Solana does have problems with network outages, which Cosmos does not and Injective does not. So I think that's the reason why they're like trying to pull in Solana dApp makers to something else just as good, just as fast without all the network outages. So that could be the reason. But it gives me hope for Cosmos. The SEC charges Bitrix with unregistered operation called six tokens or coins securities okay so gary is not done attacking the crypto industry left and right left and right left and right bitrix recently said that they're going to they actually announced something i forgot what they announced just a few days ago i think they're dislisting uh or ceasing operation in the u.s uh, I forget which one, but now it makes sense because the SEC is charging them with this. And Bitrix used to be, for those of you guys that are OGs in this space, used to be the big daddy. Before Binance was Binance, okay, there was Bitrix. All the projects wanted to get listed on Bitrix in 2017, and then they shot themselves absolutely in the foot because they closed registration during the peak of the bull run in 2017. That's when the likes of Binance and KuCoin and everyone else came out and Bitrix had closed registration. They shot themselves in the foot. They gave all the ammunition to the likes of Binance, which is why Binance took control and just grew and grew and grew. 
But anyways, once upon a time, they were the biggest. Now, I don't hear much about them anymore. The SEC is still charging them. Okay, but what's more interesting is this. The SEC argued in his complaint that OMG Dash, which is a privacy coin, no surprise. You know, SEC does not like privacy coins. Algorand, and then a few other, Monolith, Naga, and IHT Real Estate Protocol. Never heard of those before. But the big name in here is Algorand. Okay, so Algorand is now officially uh, declared to be a security by the SEC. Okay, so that's the bigger news. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys are Algorand fans. And, um, you know, they're a promising L1. They have a promising ecosystem, very growing very rapidly in Latin America. They did have an NFT partnership with uh, the World Cup, right? But here's the interesting thing. Here's the interesting thing, and this, this video is circulating, so I'm going to play it for you guys. But, you know, Gary himself talked about Algorand and supported Algorand. So I don't know why he's changing his stance. It's just tough. You could create Uber or Lyft on top of a blockchain technology today. Uh, well, maybe in five years you could. It would be have the performance. Uh, Sylvia McCallie's Algorand, uh, who's a uh, Turing Award winner at, at MIT that I work with. Um, Sylvia's got a great technology that has the performance. You could create Uber on top of it. So you could see, you could see he was saying very good things about Algorand because it was created by someone that attended MIT, which, I mean, it seemed like he was friends with Gary. So th that's the thing. Like, why go after Algorand right now? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. And what is his reasoning? We don't know, right? At least we don't know just yet. Maybe there's there's going to be reasoning coming out. But anyways, so this is what happened today. Caused a little bit of scare, right? And this is why this even this morning, I covered how there are Congress people that's trying to come up with legislation to basically fire that's the SEC chair. Fire Gary Gensler and basically replace that position with just a director that reports to a board. So you don't have a, 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 a single person, okay, that's making all the changes or declaring whatever they want to without oversight. Basically, what this is trying to do is bring oversight to the person that's policing all of crypto right now and all stocks and everything else. Next month, there will be a new airdropped Gala version two token. So all Gala holders right now will get a one-to-one -one equivalency of Gala version two. And the reason being there are upgrades and they want to introduce burn so that in the future, Gala becomes deflationary. And there's really nothing you have to do. The changes should automatically do this, but they're also saying they're recommending people to hold Gala in their wallet so that you get airdrop in your wallet directly. This will be coming next month, FYI. One-to-one -one airdrop. And then the old Gala version one token just becomes nothing, worthless. They're gonna not support it. Um, and then also, I haven't talked about VeChain in a while, but VeChain also, wants to make sure people are coming into the space and more specifically on top of VeChain ThorChain. So they have launched Vajor, Borjor. <laughs> I think that's how you say it, Vajor. Um, but basically this is a Web3 as a service platform. Basically it's, it's, it's an easy way to onboard dApps and companies, right? If, if they wanna come out their own token, Right? They want to come out with NFTs. They want to build their dApp, especially EVM compatible dApps because VeChain is EVM compatible, right? They just want to make it very easy for people to come in and build. That's it, right? Without learning everything there is to know, they basically built this like white label solution for people to come in. So that's pretty good. That sounds pretty darn good. And also... VeChain's wallet, right? They have basically removed the fees. One of the big upgrades for VeChain is basically removing fees and they have implemented that into the wallet. So basically it costs nothing to make transactions within VeChain now. Uh, it's quite amazing. So VeChain definitely trying to make big moves, catering 
still B2B, but it's trying to cater more to B2C, which is great. And they have a USC relationship. They're also based in Europe now, right? They are expanding, so that's fantastic. 